Hello and welcome to the LCB Smith Show. My guest today is Nick Weevil, who has been studying, who, is, who has qualified at the Welsh Institute of Chiropractic. And the topic is crackle and pop. How can chiropractic make a difference? Nick, welcome to the show. Hello, good afternoon. Nick, give us a bit of a background on yourself. What led you to become a chiropractor? I have always been interested in um, uh, human biology and anatomy. And when I was at uh, school, I used to uh, catch a bus every morning with a gentleman that worked in a microbiology lab. And I thought mm -hmm. I'd start with the micro labs. And I went and worked there for three months and um, found that it wasn't the most enjoyable looking down microscopes all day. So I started traveling around different departments in the hospital. And I worked in the mm -hmm. stroke rehabilitation unit. and I enjoyed mm -hmm. that hands-on with the patients and that one-to-one -one that you get very much with the patients. And um, I then went on and worked in a school with some handicapped children in the physio department. And then I did some work experience with other um, uh, sort of uh, professions along those lines. And chiropractic was the one that appealed to me the most. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a total convert because I fell off my head from a galloping horse and ended up work walking with a cane. And every time I went for a chiropractic treatment, I had to have something like eight of them over four weeks. I felt mm -hmm. just immense, immense, immense relief. So I'm going to ask you, I don't even want to tell people what you do. I'm going to ask you, what is it that a chiropractor does that brings such relief? So in that sort of circumstance where you're talking, there's obviously been some trauma involved. So the tissue yes. has become... Uh, damaged and irritated and this alters the normal function and what we're looking at doing is restoring that uh, normal function so the main thing the thing that chiropractors are renowned for is the spinal um, manipulation which is that sort of popping cracking sound that you usually get when you're treated this mm -hmm. treats the joints so there's a mechanical element to this and a, a, a neurological element to it the um, mechanical element uh, opens up the joint surfaces and helps to re-lubricate them. And as that process happens, you often get a popping or cracking sound. And then that restores the joint movement so that it should work better. And when it works better, it should be less painful. Yeah. There's also a neurological element to it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, am I going too fast? No, no, go on. Okay. There's a neurological element to it as well. And the uh, neurological element helps to um, dampen down some of the tight muscles. So when you adjust the, uh, a segmental level in the spine, it has an inhibitory effect at the spine at that level. And that calms the muscles down. So you get rid of that tension uh, you don't get rid of it completely but you get rid of some of the tension from, from it mm. um, and it also has it very recently uh, i think it was this year in fact there's been some research out of canada that showed that it reduced temporal summation of pain in in the brain so it reduces our perception of uh, of the pain as well so you get that uh, instant relief unfortunately as as you found one session isn't enough you need to add to that and do more so what i've talked about so far is just the joints so if it, when you say one session is not enough is that because because you're working with the spine which is sensitive and you cannot just manipulate it as you please you have to do it kind of in stages that's one reason uh, that's definitely one reason um different people can tolerate different amounts of treatment so some people mm -hmm. are very acute and very uh, inflamed and you need to go slowly and gently with them some people we treat all uh, age ranges so i'm going to treat a 21 year old rugby player differently to how i treat an 88 year old uh, female so mm -hmm. some people need to be gentler and work through for for uh, whatever reason um mm -hmm. but more to that it's um often your body is doing something wrong and we need to change it and get it doing something mm -hmm. uh, working in a better fashion. So the spinal manipulation I've talked about is just one element. Um, if you mm -hmm. just treat that element, it doesn't work 100% effectively. It's a very good element and it's essential, but it's mm -hmm. not everything. 
you need to add to that. So you need to work on the muscles. I said the muscles can contract. When they do that, they can build up with toxins, and those toxins can make the muscles painful. So sometimes mm. you need to work to get the muscles to relax down and get rid of the toxins. That can mm. become a learned behavior pattern. So you can have a muscle that reacts incorrectly. This can be for a multitude of reasons. Most commonly in our society, posture. Our posture is bad. We put things in a stress position and we keep reverting back to that position. So uh, retraining it away from that is an important part. So you have the spinal manipulation, the muscle work, and then the third big element, the big three that I focus on, uh, is rehab, rehabilitation. Be that um, a, a simple exercise to do, like a stretch or a strengthening exercise, or a full-on course of, of rehab with a uh, with an instructor. Okay, so that answers another question for me. When sometimes, well, I, I regularly go for this spinal manipulation, but sometimes mm -hmm. I walk out of there. And the chiropractor actually hasn't done any spinal manipulation. She just presses her finger on parts of my, you know, on, on a muscle somewhere. And it is incredibly painful, but the pain kind of dissipates. And yes. that, that's got nothing to do with spinal manipulation, but goodness, it works. Good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's called trigger point therapy. So that's uh -huh. aimed at. The, aimed at the muscles, at getting the muscle tension down. So your initial injury, um, there was trauma involved. So there would have been torn mm -hmm. tissue, there would have been swelling. Um, yeah. That would have been painful and would have restricted your movement. But if, mm -hmm. um, so say for example, uh, I'm at my computer, if I use my mouse and I hitch my shoulder, all mm -hmm. the time this muscle is tight. And then that's going to restrict everything on that side of my neck. But the, the thing that's causing that, is that muscle tightening so i want mm. to change that behavior get it to relax down as mm. the chiropractor you're limited on how much you can do that a lot of that relies on the patient's um, awareness and compliance but i can work mm. on that muscle i can trigger point that muscle to get it to relax and if you the earlier you get in there the better you can stop those things developing onto the the next thing and the next thing well i'm really pleased that i managed to to get chiropractic treatment because um, when I had that really bad injury, uh, it reminded me of my dad going for two or three back operations and it, it just made things worse and I just did not want to go that route. So that really worked for me. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> now, I, from what I can gather, there are different approaches to, to chiropractic. I've once um, observed this, uh, what is called McDimony. And I yep. thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm sure there are people who will really benefit from that. But for me, it, it it didn't look like that was really, you know, effective. But then, like somebody said, I like a bit of rough. So <laughs> are, there, <laughs> are there different approaches to chiropractic? Yes. Yeah, so the uh, two main ones are diversified, which is what we've talked about so far. Um, mm -hmm. which focuses on optimizing that health. Um, and with the spinal side of it, you look at spinal manipulation where you get that audible crack. Um, yes. uh, and then you've got the muscle work and the rehab. And then on the other side, you've got the McTimony uh, chiropractic. Mm -hmm. This is much, much gentler. Um, and in terms of whether it works, it comes down, it's a very personal thing. Uh, so uh, you have to, as a clinician, try and uh, evaluate and judge each patient uh, and then uh, together decide on a course of action that you move forward with uh, and then review it. Um, and for some people, uh, their, uh, way of, their preferred way is, is that gentler way. So with a McTimony chiropractic, the contact on the skin is much lighter, but they use a lot more speed um, uh, uh, on it. Um, and again, some people prefer that uh, that firmer side of it with the manipulation side of it. I'm like yourself. I prefer that. Uh, uh, I feel I get more benefit out of that mechanical uh, mm -hmm. aspect of, of really getting the joints moving and loosening it up. But I, I know plenty of people that also get benefit from the from that McTimney gentler side of it. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, I'll, I'll ask the question anyway. Um, there's a chiropractor who is also a great philosopher, and he he likes to uh, refer to he likes to refer to chiropractic as aligning the spine with the divine. 
Now he's, okay. he's a big, he's a big, bold, brash American. So is there a, a spiritual component to this chiropractic stuff as well? Or could there not, be? not in the way that I practice. Um, mm -hmm. I practice on um, a very sort of uh, mechanistic aspect of it um, with that neurological component. Mm -hmm. um, with overall health, I believe there's much more to overall health than just um, than, than, than just the physical side of it. Uh, so I know mm -hmm. that there are plenty of people that do look at that uh, side of it as well. Uh, in America, mm -hmm. especially, you get these different philosophies that occur. Uh, so you get these very mm -hmm. evidence-based practices, and you get these um, very uh, uh, more open-minded, holistic uh, aspects of it. In Britain, we're encouraged to look more down a um, uh, evidence-based route. So we're wanting to be able to justify what we can do um, with, with mm. and back it up with some, some research. So with that aligning with the divine, um, if there is research on that, I, I haven't read it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we do talk about well-being uh, in the person. So in in a uh, in a spiritual person, I think that then it was a big part of their of their well-being and their healing. Mm -hmm. Does it, that answer your question? It 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 does because it yeah yeah it does indicate that there are different approaches. You've got you've got this fine in the middle, but there are different approaches. Like there are different facets to a diamond. Find the one that works for you. Nice. Um, is it true that the spine is a map of the nervous system and that your organs are also represented in in the nerve roots in your spine? Not sure if I described this correctly, but I've seen maps of the spine with all sorts of organs and, and points attached to it in, 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 in diagrams. Yes, interesting. Um, I've never thought of it uh, in that respect, but I see exactly where you're coming from. Um, so the whole body is a feedback loop and the nerves are modulating uh, uh, and are the um, pathways for that feedback to take place um, so mm -hmm. problems and interruptions with that nerve with the nerves can interrupt that feedback that occurs so mm -hmm. um, you have um, uh, uh, afferent and efferent signals uh, signals coming uh, sorry going and coming from so there mm -hmm. are nerves coming from the brain through the spinal cord out through the nerve root to the organ and then okay. there are nerve sensory nerves coming back the other way um, yeah. so the loop can be affected in either way mm -hmm. so sorry carry on no that's fine i was listening I, I was just going to give an example so uh, with the internal organs so the heart lungs and liver um, we call that uh, a viscerosomatic um, so the one that everybody knows is your heart can refer down your left arm. Um, mm -hmm. Your gallbladder, for example, can refer underneath your shoulder blade. So mm -hmm. if I've got somebody coming in with pain underneath their shoulder blade, in that initial assessment, you don't just jump to, oh, it's a shoulder problem, it's a rib problem, mm -hmm. it's a muscle problem around there. You have to think about that viscerosomatic element. I can't treat a gallbladder problem, but uh, I should hopefully be, it should be on my list when I'm someone's coming in with a problem in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you, you've got the chiropractic and you've got osteopaths. I've never been to yep. an osteopath, but from what I could gather, it's, it's very similar. It, what is the difference? The difference is mostly historical. Um, when both professions were set up, the... Uh, the, the, our knowledge was much less. So we had the osteopaths that believed that the blood flow around the body was the most important thing. And we had the chiropractors mm -hmm. that believed that uninterrupted nerve impulses were the most important thing. Um, mm -hmm. And that uh, to, to get the body in perfect health, you had to focus on those. In reality, they're both important and you need to uh, work on work on both of them uh, over the years as our knowledge has developed um, the two have become much much more aligned and now the difference is more one of practicality um, in terms of the techniques we have uh, learnt are uh, slightly different so mm -hmm. traditionally chiropractors use what's called a short lever technique and the osteopaths will use a longer lever technique. Um, mm -hmm. 
I mostly use chiropractic maneuvers, but I do use, I have learned some osteopathic techniques that I use and it goes back to what I said earlier. Everybody's mm -hmm. different and you need to work and find that way with that, with that patient. I don't do the same thing for every patient. So it's working around the problem and, uh, uh, and working out what's best for the individual. Mm -hmm. So working out what's best for the individual, you don't use only chiropractic. Um, from what I uh, can gather, you also use stuff like acupuncture. Now, I must tell you, when I, went, when I had this injury, I went to a physiotherapist who did acupuncture, which I thought yes. was, in, in hindsight, thought I thought was totally inappropriate because the, 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 the injury was on my spine. And she, she used acupuncture. Mm -hmm. she, she might as well do, have used birth control pills because it had absolutely no impact at all. But, but you do uh, combine um, chiropractic with acupuncture. Why? How do you do it? And why do you do it? So um, at Durham House, we have a um, multidisciplinary clinic. We've got lots of people with different aspects. It's not just uh, chiropractors. Mm -hmm. We have acupuncturists there. Uh, that have yeah. the traditional Chinese medicine side of it. But what you're talking about, I would describe as dry needling. Um, dry needling is a sort of uh, westernized version of acupuncture. So we've taken okay. the, the acupuncture, we've taken um, uh, the Western research as well with a lot of Travell and Simons's work with the muscle trigger points. And mm -hmm. um, we found that introducing acupuncture needles into those muscle trigger points um, just like where you were talking about having the muscle squeeze that trigger point you can introduce a needle into many of those and that can have the same effect um, and again sometimes this works very well for people uh, sometimes it doesn't work very well for people um, in uh, I do the dry needling side of it uh, um, I don't do it for every patient I probably do it on I haven't audited this but probably about 30 percent of people Mm -hmm. um, sometimes with a very acute patient, so if somebody has really hurt themselves very badly and they've done it very recently, um, sometimes I'll just use the acupuncture, the dry needling um, early on just to try and create some relaxation. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not expecting okay. big results at that point. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it has no effect at all. But I would explain that to the patient. I'd talk through the options and I'd mm -hmm. explain that as part of the treatment plan. Uh, and yeah, so hopefully yeah. you're then able to understand the expectations as, as it progresses. Okay, so it's more about relaxing and not about undoing the damage thing. It, in a very acute patient, yes. Um, sometimes, uh, so for example, if I have a piriformis syndrome, which is a tight muscle in the glutes, in the buttock region, that sits quite a way under the surface of the skin. So if I'm pushing on the top, and I'm trying to affect something down here, I've got to push real hard to get to that point. Whereas if mm -hmm. I use a needle, I can just drop the needle s straight down to it. Um, mm -hmm. And um, in some patients, they respond better to that than they do to the, than they do to the needling. Uh, sorry, than they do to the trigger points. Um, yeah. But, yeah. but you, and this is why you review it, because not everybody's responding to everything. So you, you try something, you expect a certain outcome. Uh, if you don't get that outcome, you review it and go, okay, First of all, have we got the diagnosis right? If you still think the answer, if you still think you have, then you try a different way of treating it. Mm -hmm. And the same technique might work perfectly for the next person. It can do, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, going for a like for the chiropractic treatment when you are already in pain and you already feel quite fragile, and and then you have somebody jumping on you and you hear, hear, hear all of these popping sounds, it can be quite scary. So can you tell us what I, I can expect during a treatment? So the um, the popping, cracking side of it, that should mm. come towards the end of, of the treatment. The very, okay. very first time you meet someone, they should uh, come in, they should take a history. So they should ask you questions about the, any particular injuries you have at the moment. Um, and um, uh, any relevant medical history you've had in the past. So that might be mm. physical traumas, it might be previous surgeries. Then you go on mm. and do an examination, and the uh, I, I'm um, uh, summarizing, but the main three parts of the mm. examination we do are orthopedic for the nerve, muscle tests for the muscles, and you're looking for painful muscles, 
dysfunctional muscles so is it too tight is it too weak uh, and nerve tests as well so is the nerve uh, working correctly is, is there a problem you need to focus on there and then you should if you can find that's the area we treat neuromuscular skeletal so if you can find it in there i should be able to explain it to you if mm -hmm. it's something i can treat appropriately then i'll give you the treatment options available and if you want to, then we'll go ahead with it. Uh, if it's not something I can treat, then we sit down and talk about where you look from there. Uh, at Durham House, we might be able to send you to someone else uh, in, in, the, uh, in the clinic. Uh, it might be something that, that needs referral out of the clinic. Then mm. from there, if you're happy and you understand everything I've said, then we will go ahead and treat it. The treatment mm. will focus primarily, uh, because it's neuromuscular skeletal, primarily on treatment of the joint, the muscle, or, or around the nerve. So mm. the popping, cracking side of it, uh, we would take a contact with our hands over the joints, and that's the short lever technique that we talked about with chiropractors before. You're contacting over yeah. the joints, and then you're putting mm. a thrust through the joints. This is a manual movement. Mm. It's very quick. And the amplitude, the movement of it should be very low. And that, as mm. I said before, should open up the joint, re-lubricating mm. it. Often, but not always, yeah. that's associated with a popping or cracking sound. Mm. Mm. Uh, then, not always on the first one, because the first one can be a lot. Uh, then I'll often do a little bit of muscle work. And then uh, I will give you um, something to do at home 90% uh, of the time. Uh, I try not to do too much in the first session because there's a lot of input for the patient so I, mm. i've generally only given them one thing most of the time that's icing it it might be as simple as walking or it might be a specific exercise mm -hmm. i actually should have mentioned right at the beginning of the show that none of nothing that gets said here overrides what your general practitioner would would advise this is a, a, additional to that if that is your choice um can yes. i ask yeah. Can I ask what typical conditions do you treat? So the um, uh, the main ones we treat uh, as chiropractors are those musculoskeletal uh, conditions and, and nerve problems. So um, uh, uh, most commonly we're, what we're renowned for is uh, low back problems. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, we, we treat um, low back problems uh, regularly. Uh, so this can be a, a, a tight joint, it can be a loose joint, it, it can be um, a, a tight muscle, or it can be a, a trapped nerve. Um, what you're trying to do, first of all, in your diagnosis is isolate which one of those is most likely. And you'll mm -hmm. use tests, sometimes you'll use imaging to I isolate that. Uh, and then you'll go around about treating that. That can occur anywhere in the spine, so through the thoracic into the neck. Um, the, the, um, uh, we can then treat other areas of the body. So we can treat shoulders, uh, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, um, ankles, um, and uh, try and get the whole body working better. Mm. What we do most, though, is the spinal aspect of it. And, and that would be stuff like sciatica? Sciatica is a really common one. So uh, mm -hmm. there are several causes for sciatica. So the sciatica, the sciatica just means leg pain from irritation of the sciatic nerve. So it's not necessarily uh, very descriptive in and of itself. Um, mm -hmm. So you need to try and find out why you have got uh, sciatic pain. So there are five mm -hmm. nerve roots in the spine uh, that come together in the buttock to make the sciatic nerve. So it, is it mm -hmm. compression of one of those five as it leaves the mm -hmm. spine? Is that happening from a joint? Is it happening from swelling? Is it happening from a disc bulge? Then when it comes together in the buttock, it can be pinched by that nerve, the piriformis I was talking about. So is it a muscle catching on the sciatic nerve? Um, uh, there are various other things as well, but commonly those are the most common ones by, by a long way. Once you, mm -hmm. once you have a firm idea of which one it is, you focus your treatment at, at that specific one. Mm -hmm. And, and you mentioned frozen shoulder as well. Uh, I don't. Uh, we, I, I mentioned shoulder problems. Um, frozen oh, shoulder yeah. is one is one shoulder problem. Um, mm -hmm. See a lot of that. I think I've seen two people this week with frozen shoulders. Okay. So frozen shoulder. Its other name is uh, adhesive capsulitis. Um, 
So this uh, has a uh, three phases to it. So you've got the freezing uh, phase, the thawing phase, uh, sorry, the freezing phase, the frozen phase, and the thawing phase. Um, mm -hmm. We can speed up the, the recovery with the frozen shoulder. Um, mm -hmm. But again, back to that diagnosis, frozen shoulder can look in the early stages very much like a, a, a subacromial impingement syndrome. So it's trying to isolate one from from the other uh, and then treating it uh, appropriately. The, we can mm. treat both of them, but the frozen shoulder, the prognosis is much longer. Uh, mm. So it's explaining that to the patient. And with frozen shoulders, particularly 95% of them there or thereabouts will get better. Whatever you do, it's just how quickly that gets better. And mm. then what we can do is help speed up that process. So, so in a way, by, by doing these treatments, you, you stimulate the body's natural healing ability? Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. So um, the main premise of chiropractic when it started um, was to uh, help the body to heal, but with as little sort of uh, risk associated with it, an intervention as possible, so that you're encouraging the person, the individual, to be as healthy as possible. And when they're healthy, they can um, uh, they can uh, fight off infections better. They can uh, they they can heal themselves uh, more efficiently, uh, and then helping to maintain that um, uh, so that they can get so that they can stay as healthy as possible. Mm. Um, we're not specifically working on on immune systems or anything like that. It's it's a, a case of getting the patient uh, once. Sorry, I've kind of skipped a bit. If a patient comes to you in pain, obviously you want to get them out of pain. Then you yeah. want to rehab it and reduce the risk of that coming back again. But we also mm -hmm. look at that longer term maintenance aspect of it, which you'll often see mm -hmm. in sports people, which is I don't just want to be here. Um, uh, I, uh, I want to be as good as I can be. I want to be optimal uh, and as healthy as possible. So we work mm -hmm. with them towards towards that. Mm -hmm. Are there areas that you do not necessarily treat, but there's kind of a mess that um, chiropractic could work for that? Obviously, it can't work for everything. What is it that you would tell people that you cannot treat? So historically, uh, and we're going back hundreds or so years, um, uh, historically, chiropractors said that they could treat multiple, multiple uh, different things. As our mm -hmm. knowledge has progressed, um, we, uh, we've we isolated that down to that um, neuromuscular skeletal aspect of it. There mm. are, um, so the most sort of controversial area at the moment uh, is sort of asthma and infantile colic. I personally don't say I can treat those, um, uh, mm. treat those issues at all. Uh, there have been some chiropractors in recent times that have said that they can treat it. Um, uh, this then creates a debate uh, as to whether that's the case or not. Um, uh, and the, uh, the the concern is that it's then being misleading uh, to people if you're saying one thing and going ahead and, and you can't uh, justify that. And this goes back to what we were saying earlier with that evidence mm -hmm. side of it. You want to be able to back that up with some evidence uh, to bring in. In my opinion, with the asthma and the infantile colic, there isn't enough evidence behind it. We don't know enough about it. Uh, uh, so I've got nothing wrong with going, hey, we don't know enough. Let's do some research. Let's work on it. Uh, and as long as you're open and upfront with the patient to start with, that's that's the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. so, so your treatment may, might bring just pain relief and uh, it might look like you treat the cause, but it's not necessarily the case. Are you talking in those specific cases like asthma yeah. and colic? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure, to tell you the truth, 100%. Um, there's definitely mm -hmm. been babies I've seen treated where the where mother comes in and goes, oh, I've got a really colicky baby. Um, and I've seen them treated, it, and they've had pelvis treated, neck treated, and then the, the mother goes, oh, it was fantastic, they're now sleeping. What, whether that, whether the baby had colic, and even what is colic to start with. Uh, so mm. colic to me is more of a GI irritation, uh, or whether they had a mechanical issue that was that was causing them pain and, and making them a grouchy. I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah. 
babies tend to respond really quickly. So if a baby's not responding quickly and if there's no contraindication and if you're open and up front with the patient, with the mother at the start and you've explained everything, then I personally don't have a problem, problem with that. Um, uh, but I think the, the, the mother needs to be informed so that they can make their own decisions, uh, and, and, and the father <laughs> needs to be informed so they can make their own decisions in, in, uh, in that. So I've definitely seen some sort of grouchy babies get a lot better from it. But mm. what we're treating, I don't think we know enough about that. But as long yeah. as it's not dangerous treatment, um, uh, and, and the mother's happy and the baby's happy, then, then I think it's definitely you can, you can try. Oh, and just just one last, well, second last, very obvious question. I don't need to remove my clothes to get this this treatment. <laughs> Not today. Um, <laughs> so, the um, in our guidelines, uh, it says that um, we might have to ask people to take off some of their clothes, but there should always be a gown available for that, uh, oh, if that okay. is the case. So you should be able to maintain uh, your your. Uh, modesty. Um, yeah. I always tell people if they're phoning in for a new patient consult that they might have to. So, for example, a shoulder. If I'm treating mm -hmm. a shoulder, I've got to be able to get to the shoulder. Indeed. Um, Indeed. So, yeah. so if you're wearing a really long sleeve top, then then I might need to take that off. But like I mm -hmm. say, we can use gowns or people can wear strappy tops or something. Um, mm -hmm. But after that, generally speaking, uh, it, I keep people in their clothes unless. Um, I need to review it and, uh, and I need to have a look at them again uh, unless they've got a new complaint uh, or it's not going the way I'm expecting. Mm. But most of the time for the for the treatment side of it, yeah. they're in the yeah. clothes. Nick, if people want to get hold of you, if they've got any other questions, uh, they can contact you at this website, which is now on the screen. It's called dadamhousechiropractic.co.uk. Yep, and, and we've they will all just had our pictures done, so we should have new pictures as well. So. Good. <laughs> and from there, they can send you an email or they can co they can call the, the practice if, if they want more information. Definitely, yes. Nick, that's been really quite informative. Um, it's answered right. a lot of questions from my side, and it's, it's made a lot of things clear to me that I've experienced over the years but never been able to, to put into words. So that's been really quite informative. Thank you very much for your time. Good, I'm glad. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll see you then next week, Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock UK time. Same place, same time with another really interesting topic this time, well, next time as well. So thank you and goodbye.